Here's another little example we're going to talk about. Uh, here we have a vector that, again, is called v. It's got a length or a magnitude of 5, and it's pointing in a direction that's 53 degrees above the horizontal. And we're going to still keep choosing these as our positive directions. So these are our, our axes and our positive directions. Well, the first thing I'd like you to do is pause the video and draw the components. Don't worry about calculating any numbers. Just try to draw the triangle that indicates the components for this vector. I hope you tried that. Well, remember that we have to draw a triangle that uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and the legs should be parallel to the axes. Can you see that this is the right triangle? The overall vector is the hypotenuse, and this leg is parallel to the x-axis, and this leg is parallel to the y-axis. So that's the triangle that we were trying to draw. Now, this is really not acceptable yet because I've got to put in some arrows. Well, the overall vector was pointing up and to the left. Can you see that the overall vector is pointing up and to the left? So the components should be pointing up and to the left. Since the overall vector was pointing up and to the left, um, the vertical component should be pointing up, and the horizontal component should be pointing to the left. If you draw the components without arrows, it's wrong and useless. Vector components have to have arrows to show what direction they're pointing in. Uh, let's put in some reasonable symbols for these sides. What would be a reasonable symbol for this side? v sub x, because this is the component that's parallel to the x-axis. And a reasonable symbol for this side, v sub y, because this is the component that's parallel to the y-axis. All right, now I'm not going to ask us, you to calculate the components here, although maybe you already can. We're just going to, uh, I'm just going to tell you what the components are. So in this case, this component is going to be 4, and this component is going to be 3. Just take those numbers on faith. Suppose those numbers are 4 and 3. So you can see I'm not really drawing this to scale because uh, it actually looks like on the board this leg is actually a little shorter than this leg. Maybe I should have been more careful about that. So, sorry, got a little sloppy. Uh, I'm not really going to be trying to draw these triangles to scale. I'm just going to draw them all looking pretty much the same. Uh, so remember, I'm not trying to draw these to scale. Uh, even though on the board, the vertical leg is longer than the horizontal one, I've actually drawn it um, as shorter. Okay. So um, anyway, the important point is that this is a length of 3 and this is a length of 4. Now, so far, these are wrong because I haven't included the signs. You've got to include the signs on the vector components. Well, what should be the sign on the x component? Well, the x component is pointing to the left. That's what this arrow indicates. Our x component is pointing to the left. But the positive x direction is to the right. Positive is to the right, but this vector is to the left. So we've got to put this negative sign in here. v sub x is not 3, it's negative 3. Positive direction is to the right, but the x component is pointing to the left. Now you can see why it was so crucial to get this arrow correct. How about v sub y? What should be the sign on that? Well, the positive y direction is up, and the y component is pointing up. The y component is pointing up, and our positive direction is up. So we're pointing in the positive direction. So this should be positive. So we should put in a plus sign. Now, remember that in ordinary life, we don't usually put positive signs in front of positive numbers. Uh, but that's not acceptable for a beginning student in physics. A beginning student in physics should put negative signs in front of every negative number and positive signs in front of every positive number. This is a really crucial habit uh, for you to get into. Now, your instructor and TA probably don't do this, but that's because they're not beginning students anymore. If you're having difficulty with this material, you need to get into the habit of always putting a positive sign in front of the positive numbers, just like you would put a negative sign in front of the negative numbers. That's really one of the main things that we're going to be uh, trying to build the skills of in this portion of the videos. Why didn't we put a sign in front of this number? Well, remember that the overall vector um, does, never has a sign. We can never talk about the sign for the overall vector because it's not parallel to either the x or the y axis. Since the overall vector never has a sign, it would be kind of pointless to always just put a plus sign in front of that. So that's the one case where you don't have to put a plus sign. Um, you should put a plus sign in front of every positive number, except for numbers that are always positive. 
Um, so if a number could have theoretically been positive or negative, you need to put either a plus or a minus sign in front of it. But if you're dealing with a number that's always positive, then we shouldn't bother putting a positive sign in front of that. I'll say that again. Uh, for a beginning student, when you're dealing with numbers that theoretically could come out either positive or negative, you should always include the sign. Not just for negative numbers, but also for positive numbers. But there's some types of numbers that are always positive. Well, then it would really be kind of wrong to indicate the sign on that. If a number is the type of number that can only be positive, then we don't need to indicate any sign. Well, we never can indicate the sign for an overall vector, so there's no point indicating that this is a positive number, even though it is. But components can definitely be either positive or negative, so we have to indicate the signs. Now, what would we do if we only wanted to focus on the lengths of the components? Well, if we only wanted to focus on the lengths, remember that we would use the dot to indicate we're focusing just on the length or the magnitude. Now, a magnitude is the type of number that's always positive. So a magnitude is the type of thing that you should not indicate the signs for, since it's always positive anyway. So this is the best notation to use for this triangle. And for this overall vector. Here's another overall vector. It's a different vector, but I'm going to give it the same name. I'm going to call it V again, and it has a length of 5. And this is again making a 53 degree angle with the horizontal, but now it's pointing below the horizontal. We're going to keep using these two as our axes and positive directions. So please pause the video and try to draw the right triangle that indicates the components of this vector. Try to draw the right triangle that indicates the components of this vector. I hope you're able to do that now. Remember um, that we want to draw a right triangle that uses this overall vector as its hypotenuse. And the legs should be parallel to the axes. We're drawing a right triangle. This leg is parallel to the x-axis, and this leg is parallel to the y-axis, so we've accomplished our goal. Now, let's make sure that we put our arrows in. Let's put some arrows in. Well, we know that the overall vector is pointing down and to the left. We can see that the overall vector was pointing down and to the left. So our components should be pointing down and to the left. Down and to the left. Since the overall vector was pointing down and to the left, the vertical component should be pointing down, and the horizontal component should be pointing to the left. Now again, uh, in this problem, I'm not going to ask you to calculate the components. I'm just going to tell you what the components are. I'm just going to tell you that this component is 3, and this component is 4. Now, I've just been going on about how important it is to put um, a sign in front of every number. So why don't I put the signs in front of these numbers? Well, remember that if a number is always positive, then you don't need to indicate the sign. Um, well, we know again that we never use signs for the overall vector. So there's no need to indicate that this is positive. And these two symbols here, I use dots to show that I was just focusing on magnitudes. Well, magnitudes are always positive, so it would be pointless to show that these are positive numbers. So this is all the correct notation. This is correct notation so far. But this is really not enough to solve problems. To solve problems, we need the signed components, which we would use these symbols for. Here's the symbols for the signed components. The signed uh, components have the same symbol, but without the dot. I'd like you now to pause the video and write down the signed components. Please pause the video and write down the signed components. Well, I just told you that the magnitude of this component was 3. So all you have to do is figure out the sign. Well, we can see here that the positive direction is to the right, but the x component is pointing to the left. So this is negative. The positive x direction is right, but the x component is pointing left. So this should be a negative component. How about the y component? The positive y direction is up. But the y component is pointing down. Positive is up, but the component is down. So this should also be a negative component. I hope now that you're starting to get a little bit more comfortable with the symbols that I'm using. Remember that the dot indicates a magnitude that is always positive, so we don't indicate the sign. 
and the component without the dot indicates the signed component. We don't need to use a dot for the overall vector because remember there's no such thing as a signed overall vector. We only need two separate symbols be for the components because there's a signed component and there's the magnitude of the component. So we need two separate symbols for that. Um, but we don't need two separate symbols for the overall vector because there's, um, there is no such thing as a signed overall vector. There's just the magnitude of the overall vector. This is a magnitude, but we don't need a dot for that because we know that the overall vector always um, that never has a sign. It can only be indicated by a magnitude. Of course, the overall vector does have a direction, but we don't indicate the direction of the overall vector with a sign. We indicate it with this angle. This angle is indicating the direction of the overall vector. Um, so we certainly are not going to use a sign to indicate the direction of the overall vector. Uh, so I hope that you're picking up that my goal here is just to get um, comfort, comfortable with drawing the right triangles that show the components uh, and to start getting comfortable with the type of symbols that we're going to be using.